Hello there, I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'll show you how to hold a pen. So first of all, I want to say that there really isn't a right or wrong way to hold a pen, because holding a pen is completely subjective. Some people are right-handed, some people are left-handed, and that makes a huge difference. Some people are differently abled and have different kinds of hands and different kinds of pens. So by no means is this the absolute most correct way to hold a pen. This is just the way that I prefer to hold my pen, and I find that it works really well for using a Wacom pen on a tablet. So the tablet that I'm using here today is the Wacom Cintiq 24 HD, and the pen is the Wacom Grip Pen. Your pen might be a little bit different, but they're all fairly similar. They have a drawing end, Sometimes they have an erasing end, but not always, and they usually have a button here, at least one button, if not two. When you press down hard with the pen, it draws a thick line, and if you press lightly, it draws a thin line, and you can get that range of pressure in between. So that's basically how a tablet works. Now let's talk a little bit about holding the pen. You'll notice that I'm holding it with three fingers here. I have my middle finger, my index finger, and my thumb, and I'm holding it near the end of the pen where it starts to go out into this conical shape here. I have the button in between my index finger and my thumb so that I can roll it like this and then I can click the button here with my index finger. I can roll it back out of the way. It's a very subtle motion. You're just kind of rolling it into place so you can click it like so. Now as far as how I'm gripping the pen, I'm holding it kind of lightly. I'm not squeezing it really, really hard. I'm not holding it so light that it's going to fall out of my hand, but I'm holding it so that the end is kind of elevated and pointed down. If I don't hold it tight enough, then it kind of floats like that. So I'm using a little bit of grip on the pen, and I'm also resting my palm on the tablet surface. So I'm using my pinky finger here to rest my hand. I can even use some of my palm here, and that allows me to rest my hand a little bit because holding your hand up starts to make your arm tired. In fact, as I'm recording this video and I'm holding my arm up, it's starting to get fatigued. If you're finding that resting your palm or your hand on your tablet is causing the touch to go off, you can always turn off your touch. You can do that by either clicking a switch that's on your tablet to the lock position, or you can use one of your shortcut keys on your tablet to turn touch off. You want your pen to feel balanced, so you don't want to be holding it here where it's, you know, kind of flopping one way or the other. Generally speaking, you want to be holding it towards the end so that you have more control over the end, but you do want it to feel kind of balanced. That's why it's important to get a tablet that has a good pen. These Wacom pens don't require batteries, so they're a little bit lighter than a pen that would require a AAA battery to be inserted right around here. And in that case, a pen with a battery would be weighted more towards the end. But this is a very balanced pen. It's made to be ergonomic and comfortable to work with, so it doesn't feel too heavy or too lopsided. So let's try holding our pen like this, and let's try drawing some test strokes. You can see I'm moving mostly my arm. I'm kind of keeping my wrist locked. I'm not really moving my fingers much for this particular technique. Now it helps to have a larger tablet so that you have more room to move your arm. If you were working on a smaller screen, you might be limited to something like this, in which case you might end up drawing with your wrist and your fingers more. This particular technique works really well for drawing straight lines and curves because you're drawing really fast and your axis of motion is here in your elbow rather than being multiple axes of motion. Now let's try planting our palm on the surface of our tablet and let's try drawing some curves and we're using our palm here as our pivot point like a compass, and you can see that that kind of limits my range of movement. That way I'm only drawing this curve. That works a lot better than if you're just holding your hand up in the air and you try to draw the curve. It's gonna come out a little more sloppy. So you can kind of pick your hand up, put it back down, pick it up, put it down, and that really helps you to draw the kind of shape that you want. A big part of using your pen is navigation, and you may need to tap for various reasons to select menus. You may have to double click on things or you may wanna do stippling and dots like this. In any case, what I'm doing is I'm keeping the ball of my wrist here planted on the tablet. And then I'm just kind of going up and down and kind of pecking like a bird. But it's pivoting on this part of my hand here. And then what I'm doing is I'm just kind of similar to that technique where I was drawing the curves, but I'm lifting my pen up and just putting it down randomly. Now let's practice the technique of getting a tapered line. You want to press down firmly and then let up really quickly. So I'm kind of keeping my hand planted and letting it drag a little bit and then lifting up. So firm and planted to get a lot of pressure and then I'm ever so slowly pulling my hand away from the tablet. 
but as I'm pulling away, I'm letting it drag just a little bit to get a little bit of friction on the tablet. So if I do it quickly, you can see that now I'm getting that nice technique there. And the quicker you do it, the smoother it's gonna come out generally. But what you want is this nice tapered line. It works really well for hair and for inking, things like that. Now let's practice with the button roll a little bit. I'm gonna put down some paint here and then let's try the button roll. I'm gonna roll it towards the button, maybe click on my right click button here. I have this particular button set to right click. This other button that's closer to the tip is set to resize my brush, which is a modifier of control and alt. So you can see that I can get through my menu here and I could pick a different brush if I wanted to using my right click. Or if I wanna resize my brush, I'll hold that button that's closer to the end and now I can make my brush really big or I can make it really small. I don't have to go to a menu to change my brush size. I can do it really quickly on the fly. And then as I'm drawing, I'll roll the button away from my fingers so I don't accidentally press it. And if I want that menu back, I'll roll it back towards, select my menu command or resize my brush. And then again, Roll the button away from your fingers so you're not accidentally pressing it while you're drawing. Now let's try the eraser flip. Flip it back and draw. Back to the eraser. And back to the pen. So you'll see what I'm doing here. I'll do it really slowly. So I'm twisting it moving my index finger up, using that as the pivot point, and then grabbing it again. This is something you have to just do a lot of and practice, but if you've been drawing with a pencil with an eraser, you've probably already got this down. Now let's try drawing with the tilt of the pen. Not all pens recognize tilt, but the Intuos Pro and the Cintiq models do. So that means I can tilt my pen and I can draw with the side of the pen, kind of like you would with a pencil to do shading with a broader stroke or I can put my pen upright and then I can just draw straight lines. So imagine that this is a pencil right now. I can transition depending on the angle of the pen. Now not all brushes can recognize pen tilt and not all applications support it. So that's also something to keep in mind. I'm using Corel Painter 2017 here and the airbrushes in this program support pen tilt. So I can kind of spray my airbrush dots out here in a direction and they kind of fan out in that direction. I can spray them out in the other direction. You can see they kind of fan out this way now. Or I can keep my pen completely upright and they just kind of don't fan out quite as much. You can see as I tilt my pen, I can control the direction of that flow. Now let's try some blending techniques. I'm going to use this clockwise or counterclockwise swirl. And that's going to blend up my paint. And if I go over it multiple times and just kind of scrub it, I can really blend it together. Or I can just go over it lightly and just kind of soften it a bit. I can go really lightly and just barely soften it at all. Or again, I can go really heavy and I can smear it out. But generally this swirling motion works the best for blending. And finally, the last technique is the drumstick toss. Yeah. So there you go, those are some tips for how to hold your pen. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.